I'm not going to lie, it's been a struggle because we miss him every day. Um, just trying to find our new normal. I don't think a family, when they lose a son and a brother, anything's ever normal again. But the three of us have, have stuck together and it's ways of talking about Evan and sharing his memory and and his legacy and, and doing things in his honor that have kind of helped the healing. Yeah, it's for the first six, eight weeks, it was chaos, right? It's like you're right in the middle of a, of a tornado and, and that's where so many people that we're trying to thank helped us out. Like it was right in the middle of that tornado that people helped us out and, and then time goes on and, and uh, reality sets in, you know, summer hit and you keep waiting for, to hear his voice downstairs being mad at the Xbox and, you know, to come running upstairs looking for craft dinner at 10.30 at night before bed and, and it's just us in the house. And uh, yeah, the summer's been hard. It's, it's real now and it's, it sucks. Yeah, it it sucks bad. We've been busy because there's been a lot, because this has been such a public event, there's been a lot of events around this. And so we've tried to do that as much as we could. And then I kind of went, okay, now's enough. We, we need to figure, we do have to move forward ourselves. Um, the first of everything seems hard, going to the cabin and Evan not being there with us or us taking a family vacation that he was supposed to be a part of very difficult but we also have a daughter to think of and I mean she misses Evan too and you want life to stop but it doesn't unfortunately it moves forward even though you you want it to stand still so that you can try and grieve but it doesn't so I, I think we've been doing the things best the summer has been difficult because in the winters Evan was always living with a billet or like playing hockey. And so we always saw him at the rink. And then in the summers, he's living in the basement and he's playing Xbox and he's coming through the doors with his buddies and he's, you know, what's for supper. And so I, I've, I found it really difficult because we do expect him to, to walk through the door and he's not coming. He's not coming through the door. Yeah. Uh, we think it's very important to tell Evan's story. He, uh, he had a great life. It was way shorter than it should have been. And he would have told a heck of a story. And, and uh, just in the community of Saskatoon already, there's been um, several different ways where people have stepped up to memorialize him. Uh, a hockey tournament's going to be named after him. Uh, there's been a baseball tournament named after him. Um, the Saskatoon Community Foundation has a scholarship named after him. Um, Saskatoon Minor Hockey has a award named after him. So. Uh, he had a fantastic life and he had a, a heck of a story to tell and I, I've said right from the start and thank the Star Phoenix and anybody else who, who has come to us and given us an opportunity to tell his story. Uh, we've heard from people, I got an email from a fellow in Calgary who just said thank you so much for sharing your son's life with us because in the scope of this tragedy you see the number 16 people and you see the faces and you see the pictures but um, they don't get to understand the scope of the nature of the loss and uh, just being able to tell a little bit about the man Evan was and what he meant to us. I think a lot of people are very thankful for that opportunity to, to know him just a little bit. Well, and I, I, because he was such a good, great kid, um, I think it helps with our healing to, to talk about him and share his memory and it's just a way to for us to help heal by, by telling his story. Because he did have a great story. He was a great kid. <laughs> yeah.